Hello, this is Gary Entz, and I'm going to help you with MLA formatting today. In English courses, you'll be expected to use MLA style formatting and documentation for all major essays. This lesson is designed to help you set up MLA style in Google Docs. Google Docs is free and is probably the easiest and most user-friendly word processing option, so I recommend it. First, go to Google Docs and open up a new blank document. Now, the first thing you'll want to do is set margins. Margins in an MLA paper should be set to one inch all the way around. Margins in Google Docs are already defaulted to one inch top, bottom, left, and right. You can see this by looking at the rulers. If for some reason they aren't, you can go to File, click Page Setup, and set all margins to one inch. Next, let's set line spacing. Line spacing in MLA papers is always double spaced. There's never any need to use any spacing other than double space. To set this up, go up to the line spacing button and click double space. That should do it. Now, select the standard academic font for essays. Times New Roman, size 12. Unless your professor asks for another font, always use this standard font for your formal academic essays. Your font should now be set for the body of your paper. Next, let's set up your header. In the top right of the header of every page should appear your last name followed by the page number, both in the font and size that you will be using in the main body of your paper. To set this up, go to the Insert tab, scroll down to Page Numbers, and select the option that shows the number in the upper right corner. You should now see the number appearing up in the header with your cursor to the right of the number. Bring your cursor to the left of the number and type your last name followed by one space. Google automatically sets the font of your header to the font you have selected for your essay, but double check it here to make sure it matches. Remember that it should be Times New Roman 12 here to match the rest of your essay. If you set up the header in this way, your page numbers will advance automatically and the proper header will appear on every page, including page one. Now, click in the body of the paper to exit the header. If you ever need to adjust the header again, you can simply click inside of it to access. Now, we're ready to add class information. A standard MLA paper for college requires four lines of information in the upper left of the first page. First, type your name and hit enter. Then type your professor's title and full name. Then comes the class name and number.
And finally, the due date printed formal. I prefer to use the European style of day, month spelled out fully, and year, with no commas in between. In my classes, since I uh, may teach multiple sections of the same class, and since students in each section are writing multiple papers, I require a little bit more information. Next to the class name, in parentheses, type the five-digit CRN number of the course. You can find this number in the schedule, in the syllabus, or at the top of our online class. I'm using a fictional CRN number here, so make sure to find the number for your particular course section. Now, below the date, add a fifth line for the assignment name and description. Here I will use SA2 Critique. See the actual assignment description in your class and use the exact name of the assignment with a colon. And that should do it for class information. Now, Let's add a title. Click Enter to start a new line and center your cursor using the Center Align button. Bonus info for students here. A strong title for an academic essay usually consists of a main title that hooks the reader's interest, followed by a colon and a more descriptive subtitle all using standard capitalization of the first word and all words other than conjunctions and prepositions. Here is an example. The writing on the wall. a critique of Led Zeppelin's 1975 album, Physical Graffiti. If, like this one, the length of your title approaches the length of a regular line of your paper, break it into two roughly equal line lengths for an aesthetically pleasing look so that readers don't mistake it for the first line of your essay. Now it's time for the body. Hit enter again, and then backspace to bring your cursor back to the left margin. Each body paragraph of an MLA paper is indented one half inch. The tab in Google Docs is preset to this. So just hit your tab button, and your cursor will move to the right spot. Don't ever use your space bar to create indents, as this can cause formatting problems and inaccuracies. Now that you've tabbed, let's create some content. For the sake of this exercise, I'm going to copy paste some paragraphs. For now, if you're following along, just pause the video and type in at least two paragraphs of gibberish or whatever you like to see how things are beginning to look. Make sure you're in the right font and that the line spacing is double spaced between lines and between paragraphs. And that your text is aligned left. Always check these things from time to time to make sure you haven't inadvertently slipped into incorrect formatting. Remember, everything in an MLA paper is double-spaced, from the class information 
through the body of the paragraphs and through the Works Cited page. If this all looks good, it's time now to consider the Works Cited. Academic papers often require the use of source material, and that means you will also need a Works Cited page. Let's set that up now. Place your cursor on the empty space below your last line of text. and hit Backspace. If you have additional empty spaces, below that, use your Delete button to clear those. Or you may accidentally push your Works Cited page to the wrong spot if you make additions or deletions to your paper later on. Now, Let's make a true page break so that your works cited will always be in the right spot. Open up the insert tab, scroll down to break, and select page break. You should now see your cursor at the very top of a fresh page. Perfect. Center your cursor. and type works cited. Just those two words printed plainly with correct capitalization of the two words. Then click enter and backspace to bring your cursor back to the left margin. Let's input some listings now. I'm going to copy paste some samples I have set up in advance. Notice that these are listed alphabetically by the last name of the first author listed, and that abbreviations, punctuation, and title markings whether in quotation marks or italics are very specific. The first listing is an article from a database, while the second is an essay from a print anthology of essays. I don't memorize the formatting here, and instead of using one of the online generators, which often creates formatting errors, I format using the OWL Purdue MLA handbook found online. A simple search will get you there. The OWL Purdue MLA handbook is my go-to handbook for all of my listings and I suggest you use it too. Now we're ready to indent your works cited listings using hanging indents. Since I have some already featured here, I need to select them by clicking and dragging across them. Alternatively, you can set up hanging indent before you type yours in. The choice is yours. Hanging indent is different from standard paragraph indenting. As opposed to the standard paragraph that indents the first line, the first line in hanging indent is flush with the left margin and every subsequent line is indented. So let's set hanging indent now. We do this by entering the format tab, scrolling down to align and indent, and selecting indentation options. In the new window, under special indent, click hanging. Be sure the inches are set to 0.5 and click apply. Your listings should now be in proper hanging indent. If from the end of the last listing, you click enter to start a new listing, you should still be in hanging indent. And that's about it for MLA setup in Google Docs. What I've covered in this lesson 
is how to set up the basic format of your document. Note that I have not yet covered how to cite sources within the body of your paper according to MLA. This will be covered later. Save the document that you've set up and use it over and over again for all of your papers in this class and you shouldn't have an issue with formatting. I hope that helps. Happy writing!